Chapter 2, Section 3 Process Selection We have learned that the process architecture of a typical company may include hundreds, sometimes thousands of different processes. How do we select the process that is best suited for being improved? There are different selection criteria that help us with that decision. The first criterion is strategic importance. We might want to focus on those processes that have the greatest impact on the strategic goals of the company. In this case, we would consider profitability, the uniqueness and the contribution of that process to competitive advantage. Those processes that are most strategically important would be well suited for improvement. We might also consider health as a criterion. A process is healthy when it operates well. We might want to focus on those processes that are in deep trouble, that are inefficient, that are not well organized. Improving them may actually deliver the best benefits of a BPM initiative. Third, we might consider feasibility. Even if a process is strategically important and is of bad health, it might still not be feasible to change it. Feasibility relates to different obstacles that can be in place for getting the process improved. These obstacles may relate to culture and politics in the company, where employees may refuse change and put up resistance. For this reason, it is a good idea to focus on processes where improvement is nicely feasible. Whether a process is of good help relates to its performance. There are different performance measures. In this book we focus on time, cost, quality and flexibility. These are very generic performance measures that are relevant to any process. Mind that in various domains there are much more specific performance measures. We can relate each performance measure to a performance objective. The performance objective formulates the desired range of a particular performance measure. If a performance measure is out of that range, we might consider improving the process. How do we now select a specific process based on the criteria that we discussed? We can use process portfolios to help us taking that decision. A process portfolio visually shows the different criteria and helps us to select the best process for improvement. In this picture you see the example of a process portfolio of a university. The left hand side axis shows the importance of the process. The bottom axis shows its health and the different colors indicate the feasibility of a potential improvement initiative. We observe that schedule courses is on the left hand side at the top of this process portfolio. This means it is the process where the combination of importance and health is best. We observe that the feasibility of improving that process is medium. For this reason we pick this process because it's on the left hand side top of this figure. We summarize chapter 2. In this chapter we discussed process identification. We have seen that process architecture is used to define the various processes of a company. We presented a seven-step method for defining the process architecture. 
Once we have the process architecture, we need to select suitable processes for improvement. We use three criteria to prioritize. This is the strategic importance of the process, its health, and the feasibility of a potential improvement. Process portfolios help us to visualize these criteria and in this way they inform the selection. Now, if we select one process in this way, we make it subject to the remaining phases of the BPM lifecycle. We will discuss these phases in the following.